All right, welcome everyone and welcome back for those who already have attended uh, some of our webinars. My name is Gabriel Bensedrin. I'm hosting this webinar on behalf of CESA Systems. Today's topic is just in time, benefits and tips from a plant manager perspective. I think that's kind of the interesting angle uh, today. I'm sure you've all heard about just in time, uh, probably learned about it, might be practicing it, but uh, Ms. Rhonda uh, Deeg, and I know I'm not pronouncing it well, please uh, pronounce it right now for me because I, I'm sorry if I, I didn't pronounce it well, Rhonda. Oh, no problem. It's pronounced D-A, Rhonda D-A. Okay, D-A. Okay, great, Rhonda D-A. Thank you. Um, and uh, so uh, we uh, were very happy to have you with us today, Rhonda, um, for sharing with us your experience as a plant manager. Um, Rhonda has a career with increasing responsibilities uh, as a general manager, director of operations uh, in uh, world-class companies, including Parker, Hanifin, Camus, Eaton, Vestian. Uh, she's also a highly regarded consultant, uh, providing training and, uh, and a variety of services to companies uh, in um, different industries, not only automotive, actually. Uh, the um, experience she's sharing is, is very, is really by definition very broad because as a plant manager, you really oversee 360 degrees, right, of the entire operations. And I think that's also what is uh, um, special about today's discussion on, on just in time. It's not only from the perspective of someone who would be an expert in just in time, but not necessarily uh, aware or used to handle the variety of other uh, constraints and goals um, of a manufacturing plant. So uh, I won't repeat everything that you see here. It's just uh, the, just to sort of give you a, a sense. And this is actually a short version of all the different uh, responsibilities that uh, Rhonda had in her career. Uh, she holds a Master uh, of Business Administration, as well as a Bachelor, Certified Six Sigma Black Belt, and uh, Certified Scrum Master. So uh, Rhonda will tell us about uh, the different uh, dimensions of, uh, of Just-in-Time, uh, including and considerations, uh, material forecast, inventory management, production changeover, space saving, lean benefits, the advantages and disadvantages uh, to be aware of, and then hopefully we'll have time for Q&A. Speaking of Q&A, feel free to write your questions as soon as they come to mind, and uh, I will either, if it's an urgent question, share it right away. If not, uh, gather them for the end of the presentation. Before uh, I pass it on to Rhonda, just a few words about the webinar uh, host uh, and sponsor, CESA Systems. Uh, you, many of you already are, know CESA Systems, just for those who don't. Uh, CESA is a world leader in lean enterprise, specifically lean manufacturing, continuous improvement, operational excellence. A very broad catalog, which is one of the specificity uh, 2,500 products uh, used by 14,000 companies of all sizes. Some of them you'll see down here, uh, but also really thousands of uh, other companies. The products include training games, lean and ergonomic office furniture, uh, workshop furniture, uh, workbenches, uh, maintenance stations, uh, or computer protection, quality control stations, as well as in the logistics areas, floor racks, gravity floor racks, trolleys, electrical trolleys, ergonomic trolleys, Kanban systems, uh, floor marking and overhead uh, signage, uh, as well as safety marking and safety equipment, personal protection equipment, Industry 4.0 includes digital signage and digital KPI management. And in uh, also visual management, more traditional but very useful magnetic whiteboards and sensories. 
So uh, without further ado, I will uh, pass it on to you, Rhonda. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, th thank you very much, Jabril, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, again, we this discussion is about just in time. Uh, next slide, please. Just in time. Uh, it requires an accurate material forecast. It is inventory management. It allows for faster production changeover. It decreases the footprint in warehouse space. It unburdens much needed floor space. Next, please. The JIT, um, it requires an accurate material forecast. A just-in-time practice can be used in conjunction with a forecasting software, which will be critical to eliminate supply chain disruptions. Uh, using software to track forecasted material for JIT will align raw material with production schedules, add accountability from suppliers of raw material, add visibility from suppliers to ensure on-time shipping. And, and please keep in mind that one supplier can shut down an entire operation. With the alignment of raw material with production schedules, it's, it's uh, very important. Can you go back to the other slide, please? It, yeah. it's very, uh, thank you. It, it's very important that um, individual commodities uh, are to be produced uh, with each uh, production period and staffing, inventory, et cetera. Uh, it is usually linked to manufacturing where the plan indicates uh, when and how much of each product uh, will be demanded. So it's very important to ensure that you align your raw materials with production schedules. Uh, next slide. A JIT, it requires an accurate material forecast. I'm sorry. Are you on the next? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A JIT um, is an inventory management. Uh, just in time inventory management practice uh, can be used in conjunction with lean methodology to assist with efficiency. And, and I really promote uh, that you use lean uh, in addition to this because by using lean, uh, you will add customer value, cut costs by using low inventory levels, remove waste such as waiting, allows uh, enough inventory to absorb maximum customer demand, improve cycle counting, and plan for every part. Now, when plan for every part is very uh, critical, uh, regardless of if you're using just-in-time. But it, it's more critical with a just-in-time method. Um, plan for every part, uh, PFEP, uh, it, it documents all relevant information for each part number in the facility, including its storage location and points of use. And this will also help you uh, to manage your raw material. So, and so the benefits of plan for every part, uh, you, you, knowing what parts you have, it can help determine uh, storage space. Uh, it can even connect with Kanban cards if you choose to do so. And it also is a foundation uh, for your entire material management system. It's a really good foundation. And for those of you who, not, who are not um, familiar with a PFEP, uh, I suggest that you try to do some, some homework and more research on it and use that in addition to uh, just in time. Next slide, please. JIT, it allows for faster production change over. Uh, just in time can be used in addition with 5S. As, and again, this is another lean methodology uh, that will be critical to your just in time. It, it helps to improve housekeeping, eliminate overproduction, lower quality defects, and you also have reduction of labor costs. And having a more flexible workforce can focus on quality production, 
with lower uh, defect rates. And you will also be able to identify, uh, for instance, if you have a defect in your production more quickly with the just-in-time method, rather than uh, overproducing your parts and having them sit and whip too long, uh, you, you pretty much have a, a consistent flow of parts. And if there is a quality issue, it, you, it, you will be more apt to uh, quickly identify what that issue is and then eliminate the issue, uh, which lowers the cost and increase customer satisfaction. Next slide, please. For JIT, it decreases the footprint in warehouse space uh, simply because it allows for proper inventory strategy that actually works. And by reducing inventory, there is less need to house excess material, thereby freeing up cash flow and warehouse spacing. Uh, there are wireless systems available uh, that will improve warehouse efficiency and provide real-time visibility, tracking accuracy, pulling, not pushing, inventory management will be optimized. And I suggest using a MinMax system, um, which is the simplest and is, is really visible. You know, the, um, the green, yellow, red methodology works um, pretty much in any industry. And then also there are uh, numerous wireless systems out there uh, that can pr help you with warehouse efficiency, uh, such as InfoPlus, NetSuite, uh, ProVision, warehouse management systems. Th those are all very excellent management systems uh, that you can utilize and, and they work very well with Just-In-Time. Next slide, please. So JIT uh, will free up and maximize much needed real estate on the shop floor. And for a large number of you listening, you know how valuable that real estate space really is. And using a lean material flow system will ensure product delivery is on time. Ensure only the required amount of material is online. Free up plant space for new product lines allow material handlers more visibility and control. And by doing this, um, you can do this without actually expanding your manufacturing uh, building or area. You know, just simply, it, it simply works and, and you can utilize this on all shifts and ensure that you also have a standardized work process in place to, to go along with just in time to maximize your floor space. And you will, will ensure that all of your employees are operating with the same systems regardless of the shift that they're on. Because there, there is a tendency for uh, shift to shift operations to be uh, somewhat different and, and, and then sometimes dramatically different. Uh, d depending on the, the team leader, the team, the supervisor, or the manager. So you want to make sure that you have that standardized work process in place. And um, I have also worked with numerous companies to help them free up plant space and eliminate um, uh, areas that they were using for extra warehouse spacing because they had too much material uh, in-house. So it's very, very good. So consider uh, standardized work with this as well. Next slide, please. Okay, the, the lean benefits of Just-In-Time, uh, the system will create a seamless flow of material to the production line, which is very important, especially when you are trying to meet customer demand and, and, and ship on time. Uh, other lean tools can, can and should be used in conjunction with JIT, and um, a couple of them I've already spoke to, but it's very important that you remember um, value stream mapping 
um, map the flow of production. This will also assist with determining the accurate amount of material that is needed online. Tag time, you ensure space of production is aligned with customer demand. Continuous flow, it eliminates waste, transport, waiting time, and inventory. Hajunka reduces lead times. Kanban gives a signal for automatic replenishment. Standardized work ensures material handlers on all shifts are following the same processes and visual factory ma uh, management display of communication boards uh, shows you your hourly hits and misses, which will um, help the, the team leaders, managers, or whomever is, is walking into an area to visually see whether or not production is on target. Uh, simply put, JIT is highly effective when reducing inventory. Uh, improving cash flow and reducing space requirements uh, is very, very important. Uh, some some people may say that value stream mapping. What does that have to do with it? If you value, if you complete a value stream map of your process, it will show you all of the disconnects that may or may not be in that process. It will show you your areas for overproduction, underproduction. Uh, where your time is being wasted and where you need to maximize uh, your resources to improve your production efforts. And it would definitely improve on-time shipping for, for your customers. Next slide, please. And so the advantages of JIT it is less likely that stock will, will become obsolete, lower production costs, improve customer satisfaction, control material costs, reduces scrap, improve quality, <coughs> excuse me, quality control material, improves on parts being right the first time. And it's very, very important that your parts are right the first time. It, it, it gives you a more smooth production process without the need to carry excessive inventory, um, and it will also help to diminish the cost of production. And doing things uh, correctly the first time will not only speed up the task at hand, but it also helps with focusing on one thing at a time so that uh, the employees are not overwhelmed trying to meet a, a, a customer order that is behind. And um, it also will, will sometimes has to be co uh, co corrected repeatedly so that um, you adjust your processes to make sure that you are producing uh, right the first time. So your standardized work, uh, procedures uh, will also help with this immensely. And a lot of time uh, is lost also when you switch from uh, one process to the next. So if you do it right the first time, uh, your employees will get those processes down uh, to where you, they have very little uh, changeover. And um, the, the benefits of right the first time will outweigh uh, not having those benefits at all because it's very very important because if, if you're not doing it right the first time you're also increasing uh, your scrap you're also increasing your material costs you're also increasing your labor because more likely you, you have to uh, run overtime to produce the parts uh, you normally would have produced in an eight hour period now you're working overtime uh, to produce those parts so it's very important that you, you put in place a process to produce the parts right the first time. So next slide, please. And some of the disadvantages to JIT, I wanted to uh, put this in because I don't want anyone to walk away 
thinking that there there are no disadvantages to this because it's going to require um, a lot of work, especially if you've never uh, used JIT. But the the work that you put in on the front end will more outweigh, and and you will uh, reap the benefits. Your revenue will definitely benefit from this uh, work being put in on the front end. Um, So, hold on, I'm sorry, I lost my connection here. Okay, so um, the disadvantage is it requires constant dedication, okay, and that's from all levels of, of management. Uh, suppliers uh, can, ne can negatively impact production if material is not delivered on time. So it's very important that you have a um, an excellent relationship with your suppliers and from my uh, standpoint I, I have even visited suppliers to help them with their forecast um, because many suppliers uh, did not know how to accurately uh, forecast uh, the, the material uh, the products that we were going to need uh, in our production in order to to have on-time shipping uh, an investment may be required to link uh, JIT to a computerized system. And again, um, that, that could be a minimal uh, investment, but definitely worthwhile uh, doing. Uh, an investment may be required to link uh, JIT to a barcoding system to help track material. Uh, though some of those systems can be set up even on your forklifts. Uh, using a scanner uh, to track the material uh, so that the material handler knows exactly where the material is. And also an audit may be required and constantly maintained for finished goods uh, to ensure unexpected orders can be met on time. Uh, most people on, only audit their facilities or their inventory once a year. Uh, with, with JIT, you can really uh, strategically set this in place as pro probably one of the um, uh, on the check sheet for material handler just to um, help to manage inventory or if you have the computerized system that will help you to manage in inventory uh, systematically. Uh, customers may want a stocking agreement on finished goods. Now this uh, for me sometimes in the past has been a, a headache because I have had customers who require uh, stocking agreements. However, um, I had to change those stocking agreements because uh, when the customers wanted to change over their or, or retool their plant, they did not want to accept all of the finished goods that was that was sitting in my inventory. So uh, part of the stocking agreement should require the customer to accept any finished goods um, that is a part of your inventory. Should they decide to change over to a new product, uh, eliminate that current product, or completely retool uh, their plant, um, et cetera. And um, so, and then some, sometimes this, this can just uh, be a part that you're making for one specific customer, and therefore uh, you cannot sell it to anyone else. So that customer should be required to have a stocking agreement which includes accepting any leftover inventory uh, should they decide to um, to make a change. And uh, advantages of buying in bulk may be lost, but again, uh, there is a huge cost savings with that because the you're not having obsolete material sitting around. And uh, the largest disadvantage is not implementing JIT. Um, I suggest at a minimum implement JIT and lean in critical areas. So Jabril, that's that, that's all I have. Um, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Rhonda. Uh, very very clear. And um, I um, time now to collect questions. Uh, let me check. So you uh, you should all be seeing a 
question section. Please go ahead. So I do have already a couple of questions here. So we'll start with the first question. Um, what is the key to successful implementation of just in time? There are, clearly there are many considerations actually for just in time to be successful. Here I'm I'm kind of elaborating on the question. Uh, you mentioned lean and um, so there, there, are, there are a lot of conditions basically that are necessary for just in time to be successful. But what would you say that the key is? I said that there are, are three uh, top key factors. And in, in the first one is top management commitment. The second one is employee involvement and commitment. And the third one is supplier uh, coordination and relationships. I think all three of those together um, work in conjunction to having a successful JIT pro program uh, in your uh, facility. When, uh, and, and another question is uh, the related to the current uh, situation where there are uh, supply chain disruptions, there may be companies that have already applied just in time and um, are facing difficulties now uh, with uh, their supply and suppliers being disrupted or the inability to properly forecast demand. Um, how would you handle that? What I would do, if that is the situation, I would have more parts on hand uh, than, than usual. For, for instance, if um, all, if, if you only require 100 parts to be on hand, I would probably make that 125, 150, depending on the customer. And it should be clear of, of um, the amount of production that is actually required. Um, you can look at past forecasts and see, and um, simply calling the customer, having having a a discussion. Uh, with them, and I think that, that that can clear up any discrepancies. So another uh, question here uh, is uh, relates to uh, the well. I'm, I'm not. I, it's. I don't. I'm not sure of the statistics, but uh, basically there are a lot of companies that are already implementing just in time. Uh, but mm -hmm. are they doing it right? So is there is is there room for improvement in just in time? Have you seen situations where uh, can you basically audit your just in time process and find rooms for continuous improvement? And what would that be? Oh, ab absolutely. Every process that you put in place should be audited. Uh, and one thing that that I did. Um, uh, or, or do with my um, direct reports is to have a um, probably a gimbal walk and on that gimbal walk audit the processes that you have in place and by doing so you know um, whether or not your process is working what is working what is not working and what needs to be changed now when you figure out what is not working then you need to bring in all of the key personnel involved in those decision makings as to what changes you're going to make. And those key personnel include your, your uh, material handlers, uh, your uh, customer service representatives, um, your team leaders, your supervisors, managers, uh, uh, your warehouse personnel, whomever. Whoever touches that part, even production, they should have some input on on whether or not um, on whether what changes are actually going to be made because in the end they have to manage the, the process. So if you want it to be successful, then their in, input should be uh, taken into consideration. There is another uh, question regarding uh, where just in time can be applied. Uh, so the question is technically just in time can be applied to material of any form at any level and, and that's a question mark 
like components, subcomponents, subassembly, assembly, finished good, etc. Yes, it can be applied uh, in in all those areas, and and sometimes the best solution to um, some of those items may be a kitting area, where, for instance, if you have uh, smaller components that go on a larger component, and that once uh, all of the sm smaller components are attached to the larger component, is it easier to bring line side and then just go ahead and, and, and attach it, uh, for instance, to uh, uh, an engine block? You know, so uh, you can have just in time uh, kitting areas, which which I have actually set up, and they are very very successful. But yes, there it can be applied to all of those areas. All right. There's a, another question that um, we we always have back orders, uh, constantly expediting production to make up for shortages, uh, and um, and so if we if we go to just in time, we always be we always run the risk of shutting down the line. Uh, we'll always be late. So there is always this this concern of of uh, creating increased risk of being even more late if there's mm -hmm. uh, rather than having extra buffer. So I, I've been in, in many situations where there have been backlogs uh, in the millions of dollars and you have to first try to eliminate the backlog which you can do and if you continue to have a backlog I suggest uh, completing a value stream map so you can see exactly where the chains and the link are broken and you can fix those areas. Um, a, a value stream map will give you a clear visual on what, what areas need to be improved. Uh, so you may have overproduction in one area and underproduction in another area and setting up min-max systems uh, for your WIP, your working process, and then seriously taking another look at your just-in-time uh, application and making sure, and you don't have to have just-in-time in every single area. Um, you can have just-in-time in your low runner running areas, um, but you definitely have to eliminate that backlog and doing a value stream map, completing a value stream map will help you uh, to do that. And uh, there is a question relating to the uh, systems. Uh, so you mentioned there is software available, but the um, question is, uh, what if we're uh, not willing or able to invest in software right now? There seems to be concern uh, related to software investment. Uh, and uh, are there tools, like the basic tools, such as the Kanban systems, Kanban cards, the color codes, uh, flow rocks, etc., that could be used, or does it have to go digital? No, it does not have to go digital. And if you do not have the um, the resources to invest in, in a uh, digital system, I suggest using uh, the Toyota pool system and, and your Kanban cards. Um, however, it, it will take a lot of discipline uh, from uh, everyone if you do put a Kanban in place and make sure that the system is not too complex to the point to where your employees uh, lose interest because if, if you don't want it to be the next flavor of the month. But it's very easy uh, to set up the systems without um, any investment um, other than making sure that you have uh, you, 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 the right uh, products online, you know, you, 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 the, the racks or uh, your staging area is set up properly, um, your min-max system is set up properly, things of that sort. Uh, there's a question regarding the size of the company. Uh, we're a low volume operation uh, and um, a job, kind of a job shop. 
So our business is naturally oriented to batch production. Uh, can, can we implement just in time, even in a low volume uh, batch production type? No, oh, absolutely. You know, you you can have your uh, your staging areas um, uh, on your racks. You can have your 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 kitting areas. Uh, you you do not have to be a high volume uh, production facility or, or uh, area. Even even a job shop can set up just in time. You know, you just need to look at your forecast, make sure that um, you have um, your product set up in order to uh, pro produce that, those parts on time. But yes, it is very uh, feasible to do that in, in a small facility. And uh, I think uh, the last question is related to the volume. Like you said, uh, you may be losing on uh, the volume discounts or, or increasing the cost because of the more frequent deliveries that may, uh, uh, may make the product per unit more expensive. So um, do you have any advice on how to handle that and any sense of what the benefits, how much of the benefits could outweigh those costs? Yeah, that can, those, for me, I have um, simply made a phone call to my suppliers and ask them if they could actually house the inventory and I will uh, pull it, you know, when, when needed. And once I pull it, I pay for it. But, the, but I know that the inventory is actually there. Uh, suppliers, uh, they will definitely work. I have not found any supplier that would, would not work with um, a, a facility. Uh, all you have to do is ask. And they are more than willing uh, most of the time. Um, I, I've never known of an instance um, for them not to. They, they're more than willing to, to house enough product so that you will, they will all, always have that product on hand. So when they know it's needed, it, it is shipped on time. And then therefore you can have in your, your facility on time and you're not uh, housing all of that inventory. And what are the risks? And, and you and you and you'll still be able to maintain, you know, the the uh, discounts that you you're currently receiving from the supplier. All right. And and what are the risks for the supplier who agrees to do that? Or let's say you are the supplier, and being asked to work with uh, one of your big customers on a just-in-time initiative. What are the risks for you? Well, well that. That is that goes back to what I was saying when you have your stocking agreement. Um, it, it's necessary for a manufacturing facility to have a stocking agreement uh, with the customer to ensure that that customer will accept all inventory should they should they uh, retool or change over or that that product becomes obsolete. So with the supplier, it it goes in reverse. You must ensure to the supplier that I will accept uh, this inventory, you know, and um, just have that, that agreement. Um, most of the time, uh, the suppliers that uh, we work with, we, we've, we already have years and years of um, relationship with. And so they, they know the reputation and it, in, um, it's valuable for them not to lose a customer. So they are willing to make some adjustments. So all you have to do is make that phone call. All right, very well. So uh, unless there is another question, it's time to wrap up. Uh, just very briefly, uh, as you may know, this is an online extension of the CISA Systems Academy, uh, which is also a, um, an actual physical location uh, where we have a demo room and also a kind of a think tank area. We have a number of executives that uh, join us there. Uh, well, not with social distancing these days, but uh, hopefully uh, soon again. And uh, it's a chance to, uh, to 
discover different products and how sometimes uh, rather simple products can make a, a difference as part of the continuous improvement efforts. Uh, we also have a number of catalogs available. If you'd be interested in any of the topics that you see on the screen, feel free to email me at uh, jbestfreenancesassystems.us. You can also create an account uh, directly online and uh, download them. Uh, please be in touch. If uh, you'd like to uh, contact our speaker, Rhonda, uh, you see her LinkedIn profile here mine as well and i invite you to join our linkedin group uh, which has right now more than 1700 executives as members we use it mostly to announce our webinars but i also welcome contents articles from you if you'd like to submit any and uh, you will receive a follow-up email for those who have registered uh, to um, either uh, receive, well, if you, you know, you qualify for a continuous uh, education uh, or professional development hour certificate, let's just say, a PDH certificate. Uh, so if you're interested in receiving your certificate, please email me and um, I will send you a brief assessment that will document uh, the, uh, the certificate. And uh, those who are listening to the recording, please also feel free to do the same. Uh, you can email me at jbensadrain at sysassistance.us. Uh, that is um, it for today, I believe. So um, thank you again, Rhonda, so much for sharing your experience with us and everyone for being with thank us. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.